Right, so um, this is a presentation I usually give with a lot more time. So uh, this will be a really brief uh, introduction to self-sovereign identity and kind of what I think is one of the coolest applications of zero knowledge proofs that we would like your help with. Um, normally, we would take quite a bit of time and go through each of these, um, but um, a little bit about me, I also participated at Hyperledger. Um, the Sovereign Foundation is an open source foundation building global public utility for identity. And what that means is we have a blockchain that's very specialized for the use case of identity to minimize its footprint and make it so it's trustable across lots of different contexts beyond things like cryptocurrencies. Basically, it's a, a, a platform that you can use to build different kinds of trust networks um, for the exchange of verifiable claims and proofs. Um, so to get a little bit of background on the identity problem, identity is a little bit like cryptography in that you can do a bad job if you think you can do it, but you don't have any experts on your side. Um, identity standards have a long history and there's a lot of mistakes that have been made and it's a really good idea to learn from those mistakes. Um, the first kind of identity model that we've looked at in the past is essentially a centralized identity model. Most of you have built or used one of these even if you didn't do it on purpose. Um, the standards that support this sort of thing are HTTPS, SSL, TLS, the things that make it so that you know that the server that you're talking to is legitimate and then that server knows things about you that essentially constitute what they call an identity which is essentially some attributes that they know about you so they can re-establish that you are who you said you are when you come back. Now, it's really useful to be able to share that between multiple sites and multiple places, but to do that, you have to be able to correlate a person between what one server knows and what another server knows. One of the most convenient ways of doing that is to centralize it all in one place so that you, know, you can use a common database of, of things that are known about you. Um, and you know, different standards that help support that are SAML, OAuth, and OpenID Connect. But the thing that a blockchain gives us is it gives us a place where you can write attributes and everyone can write attributes. And that's really, really interesting because suddenly you don't really have an account anymore. What you have is a connection because you have keys and they have keys. So just like you know who they are, they know who you are. So instead of just the bank authenticating you, you can now authenticate the bank. And that means that it's not really an account anymore in the traditional sense, but it's rather a connection amongst peers. And you can start to think about things instead of as a server and a client, you can think about it as first parties in the conversation and trusted parties in the conversation, which changes the way credentials and identity can be interacted and can, can flow. So you now have a digital wallet and anything that's known about you by, the, by your peer can be issued to you and you can convey that to others, meaning other people can verify your credential, which means now you don't have to have one peer. You can have lots of peers and you can share that information the way you want to share the information instead of the way they want you to share the information. And if you think about that in the real world, you have a wallet. You can take your student ID card down to a sandwich shop and get a discount, and it's none of the university's business. And that's okay. Likewise, credentials now, the things we think of as tokens, can be presented and verified by anyone without having to have knowledge of the issuer. So once we have one peer, well, we could also have more than one ledger. We know we have lots of ledgers now. So there's a lot of standards that can help us in order to build this kind of identity system that's interoperable that puts the users back in control of their information. There's decentralized identifiers. There's this centralized key management infrastructure. There's the idea of authenticating using the keys that you possess. And then there's the idea of exchanging credentials or pieces of information about your identity. And so there's a lot of these standards that we're sponsoring and working on at various standards organizations. Um, and if you're interested in participating in any of these, we can talk quite a bit more offline or later about any of these standards. Um, likewise, uh, Maria and the folks from IBM are participating on ZK Lang. Um, there's a whole bunch of work going around I identity messaging formats for the, being able to communicate from one identity to another um, so that these credentials can be understood. Um, but this code is all open source. Um, the point of the Sovereign Foundation is to make it so that everyone can use this and they, you can pick up any of these bite-sized standards or pieces of technology to make everything as interoperable as possible. And so you'll notice Hyperledger Indy is not branded with Sovereign because Sovereign is meant to establish business, legal, and technical rules to make a network interoperable. And we want the technology to be something that anyone can use. So the technology is open source at the Sovereign, not at the Sovereign Foundation, but at the Linux Foundation under the Hyperledger project so that anyone can pick it up. And we can use the copyrights and trademarks inside of Sovereign to enforce the trust framework and make it so that this, the standards are interoperable and that you own your identity and no one can pull the plug on you. So what does all this have to do with zero knowledge, you, you might ask, because that's really why we're here. Um, well, we can use the standards from Identity Mixer. We have actually our own implementation of anonymous credentials inside of Hyperledger Indy that allow us to package any set of attributes up into a credential 
and issue that credential from an issuer to any identity owner. And then that identity owner can present or do presentations of those credentials as proofs to the verifiers so that you can see and understand what information is being exchanged without transferring the entirety of the credential. The idea being that you don't want to just give away your digital signatures. You don't want to create a digital wake that correlates you over time. You want a protocol that doesn't betray you or doesn't create identifiers that follow you around from one context to another. And so the identity mixer pr protocol for zero knowledge is actually a really good fit in this use case um, because it allows us to make identity contextual and we can have now keys and identifiers based on relationships instead of having to manage keys based off of um, categories that change or evolve over time. Um, but it's even more than that because when you have a system that's used to build various kinds of trust frameworks, you also need ways of, of transferring value between the parties that are involved. And you need ways of blinding information so that um, things like your credentials can serve as tokens, can serve as things that can be redeemed for specific use cases and for specific value in terms of how you interact with other parties inside of the ecosystem. So, in short, most folks who are working on zero knowledge or working on a blockchain end up trying to solve some sort of identity problem. But it turns out when you try to generalize that identity problem, there's a lot of gotchas and a lot of things that need to be worked out in very careful ways. And that's the kind of thing that we love to talk about at the Sovereign Foundation and our open source project and in, at Hyperledger Indy. So there's a whole bunch of things here that I hope you've considered if you're pr trying to build your own identity platform. And if you want to know more about what that gotcha is, I hope that you'll come talk to us and um, come participate. Um, because as we've seen with all the data breaches and all the things that have happened, um, we really need to get to a place where our correlatable data is not the root to our, of our identity, but that we have something better. And zero knowledge technology, I believe, is one of the keys to making that work correctly. So lots of places to get involved and lots of places to help. Thank you.